Revenge films. I can't help but remember that this time of year. One morning, my husband got arrested out of the blue. They said it was for a sex crime. My husband kept denying it until the very end. On the day of the alleged crime, we were invited by our mutual friend to a small celebration at their house. The alleged crime scene was within driving distance of our friends, and we were basically together the whole time. We took the train to our friends. The car belonged to our friend, and they had the key the whole time. We went to a convenience store nearby to buy groceries, so there was a footage of a security camera. He'd testified properly, so we thought he'd soon be left off for a false charge. The alleged victim was a woman who worked at a store close to his office. They said he targeted the victim then, but my husband said, I might have seen her, but I don't remember clerk's faces, and I don't even know who she is. I'm not interested. I knew he was telling the truth, but the court only adopted the testimony of the woman who called herself the victim, even though my husband denied it. The woman's lawyer even went so far as to say there's no reason for the victim to lie. The investigation by the police was also poor. They said it takes an hour to the crime scene by foot, but would only take 20 minutes if he ran as fast as he could. So he got to the crime scene and back in 40 minutes and committed the assault in 10 minutes, although he couldn't do it until the end. They argued that it's theoretically possible. My husband was found guilty. I thought it was absurd. There's no proof that it's impossible for him to commit the crime. The victim's testimony is also credible. That was the reason. My husband, who'd continued to deny the crime to the end, was judged to be malicious and was sentenced to prison. I separated from my husband in tears. Between the time of his arrest and the trial, I got fired and was forced to move far away back to my hometown because of the rumors in the neighborhood. My daughter, who was still in elementary school, cried every day because she missed her dad. I cried too. I went to see my husband often, but he never asked me to start over. All he said was, Divorce me for the sake of our family. I believe he'd never do such a thing, and he had an alibi. I knew he was innocent for sure, so I kept telling him that we'd live together again as a family after he served his sentence. I told him we'll all do our best until then. I insisted on suing the victim and making her admit the testimony was a lie. But he said, They determined the sentence based on the woman's testimony alone, without any evidence. There's nothing we can do. He just looked disappointed. My husband was released, and I went to pick him up. It'd been so long since I last saw him outside, and he'd lost so much weight. I sent him to his parents alone, believing his words that he'd recuperate for some time and will come back to me when he was ready to work. That's the last time I saw him. A few months later, he died in a suicidal accident. My mother-in-law tearfully told me, he said, I have the insurance money, so I want you to give it all to them. This is the last thing I can do for them after causing so much trouble. My father-in-law had already passed away, and he was her only son. My mother-in-law also passed away, as if to follow in his footsteps, and she even left us a will that all of her property would be inherited to us. There's no way we could take it, but we were surviving on our small savings. Rumors went around, and we moved our house and my workplace from one place to another. I had no room in my budget. We managed to live on the money my husband had left us, with his life. We lived on a shoestring. Our daughter turned 20. We moved away from our hometown and we settled down in a place where we didn't know anyone. My daughter found a job and I thought we'd finally return to a life of a normal person. Just then, I received a letter from a woman who said that the victim of the incident. In her letter, she wrote, I was suffering from domestic violence from my boyfriend at the time and I was having a nervous breakdown. The stress caused me to cheat on him, and the act of violence became even worse. It was a bad cycle. There were times when I had a one-night stand with a guy I'd only met, and he forced himself on me. In the midst of all this, I was accused of cheating, and wanting to deny it, I might have said that I was forced into it, in the form of an assault. The person I was having an affair with and your husband happened to be the same height, and I vaguely remembered his name from his ID card, so I might have unintentionally said that he had raped me. 
I was desperately trying to defend myself at the time. Maybe your husband really wasn't the rapist. I ended up marrying my boyfriend, but things didn't work out with neither my husband nor my child, and we got divorced. Recently, I've been recalling the past. I recalled that incident and felt that I needed to apologize. I might have made a temporary mistake, evaded, and made your husband the rapist. I would like to apologize to you in person. I managed to find you with my small savings. Please contact me. The anger that had pent up exploded all at once. The anger turned to tears and I collapsed to my knees and cried. My beloved husband, my daughter's beloved father was suddenly taken away from us one day. Not only that, we lost everything we had back then. Our homes, our careers, our dear friends, the trust of those around us, everything. Our precious days will never come back. Screw you! I don't know what I'd do in anger if I saw her, but I want to meet her and find out the truth. There was a part of me thinking this. I couldn't talk about this kind of things to my friends in my current community, so I asked my mother about it, but her answer was no. It's best to forget about the incident. No matter what the truth is, whether your husband was guilty or not, nothing will change now that he's dead. After hanging up the phone, I broke down in tears. For us, the incident wasn't over. The hatred I had been suppressing was growing. I continued thinking about it for some time. I couldn't tell my daughter, who was living happily, and I was suffering from the hatred that I couldn't control in my house. After all, time couldn't solve the problem. I stood up, thinking, It'd be better than just ending my life in pain, gouged out by the wounds of the past. I contacted the woman based on the contact information of the letter. The woman who came to meet me was much better looking than she was at the trial, plump and elegant. She apologized over and over again. She then confessed that she'd made my husband the rapist for sure. Why now? When I asked her, she was hesitant to answer at first but then said she was getting married again and was going abroad soon. She wanted to clear the feeling of discontent she had in her heart ever since that day before she started her new life. After the confession, the woman looked refreshed, but I couldn't tolerate someone who'd be so dirty and only make herself feel better just by apologizing in the end. I wanted her to suffer forever. I would never let her be happy. I filed an appeal for a retrial claiming that he'd been falsely accused. Normally, retrial requests are granted in the average of two to three cases a year, which is extremely rare. The latest system in Japan is commonly referred to as a closed door, but I'd recorded her entire confession, kept her letters, and submitted all the evidence I'd collected since my husband's conviction. During the trial, the woman denied the charges, saying the evidence was made up and that she'd never sent the letters. After the handwriting analysis was conducted and proved by the surveillance camera that had been installed at the place we met that the recording was made then, she cried and yelled, I've admitted the crime and apologize, so why don't you just let it go? Why should I be treated this badly now? Statute of limitations! It's statute of limitations! As a result, my husband was acquitted. The woman was also indicted, found guilty, albeit with a suspended sentence on the charge of false accusation, and was sentenced to prison. Naturally, the woman's engagement was canceled, and the civil court demanded a large compensation for damages. She ended up with a large debt. I knew this wouldn't completely wreck my husband's grudge, but a little more than 10 years after his arrest, the time that stopped finally began to move again. Today, I'm involved in support activities to ensure that no family should suffer from false accusations like we did. My daughter is now married, and I'll soon have a grandchild. How was today's video? If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment. Stay tuned for more.